Welcome to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. Dad, you know I, um, you know I love studying the human mind. You know I love behavioral economics is like one of the most fascinating things, right? You get people and you get markets. Always trying to solve something out, but it's not really solvable, right? Markets aren't solvable. Human nature is not one hundred percent solvable. You mix those together, and it's it's a pretty amazing thing. So my brother texted me this morning. He says, Daniel, um, what are some good books on the subconscious? He's trying to find out. I don't know yet. I got to talk to him. What what about the subconscious? Learning how he works, learning what makes up his um, his personality, his makeup. And, and what a lot of people don't realize is our subconscious is 95 it sees 95 percent. it controls 95 percent of what we do and we don't pay a lot of attention to that five percent our conscious what we know is going on is only five percent of what's going on i'm daniel adjami and i'm andrew adjami you're listening to financial strategies with andrew and daniel adjami today's topic is wishing hoping and praying whoa and we're glad that you joined us today uh uh, financial strategies is all about because people don't know what people don't know. Daniel, wishing, hoping, and praying, and the subconscious. That's uh, it seems like those two are connected, right? Um, you know, because that's that's all part of your your thinking. Wishing, hoping, and praying is oh, I hope so. You know, I, I wish that this would happen, or you know, praying this would happen. And 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 I mean, I'm a man of prayer. I believe in in the power and the purpose of prayer. Um, but I think when you know, when it comes to, to stuff like this, people are, 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 it's not like they're asking God for help. They're just, yeah. you know, it's a figure of speech, right? But, but they're Throw, subconscious. Throwing a prayer out, throwing a hope out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. like a foxhole yeah. prayer or something, right? Yeah. 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 And, and the prayer actually does, it does help with the subconscious tremendously. Right. Um, so we're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about real prayers, but it's just, a, it's a good name, right? Hope, right. wishing, and praying. Right. And um, it's funny when we're talking about the subconscious because uh, we talk about people intuitively knowing a lot of things um, and you see it and you hear it and you can feel it in the language that they use. Yeah. The body language, the language, right. the words. And that's the subconscious coming out and they don't even know it themselves. And um, the hope and wishing and praying, you can see when people have a hope and wishing and playing strategy or plan because um, it comes out in their language. You hear, well, markets always come back or you hear, well, I hope that I make it, it to retirement right. or you hear, I'm sure you've got a whole bunch of those. Yeah. Um, but we, we, we see this and we hear this from um, people coming in, getting second opinions, people coming in, trying to change their strategy because they intuitively know their subconscious is talking, telling them there's a different way of doing things, but they don't know what that is, right? They don't know right. what that is. So they want to, they want to learn. And that's where we go back to, to DJ texting me and saying, Hey, what's a good book on the subconscious? Because he wants to understand that so he can learn and he can, um, learn on purpose, do things on purpose, have a strategy for life and, 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 and talk to his subconscious, tell it what it needs to know. And then it will do things for him when he's not paying attention. And that's what a strategy can do for people. Right. 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 And you know, one of the things that I think of Daniel, when you're talking about the subconscious like this is the reticulator activator system, your RAS, right? R A S. And I want, and one of the things we want to do with our listeners today, right, is kick their rasses, kick, <laughs> you know, and get their reticulator activator systems going, right? And, you know, if you're in our listening audience and you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, your reticulator activator system is you go out, you buy a red Volkswagen bug, and then you realize all the red Volkswagen bugs on the road that, you know, you never saw before right? That your subconscious comes into play, says, look, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's because it didn't mean anything to you in the past, but now it means something to your, to your reticulate, to your subconscious. And that's what, what about, we're talking about. What about a Bronco? Does it work for a Bronco? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works for Broncos too. Yeah. So, you know, why Daniel and I are laughing because we both have Broncos on order and they've been on order since about November of 2021. And they went from 2022s to now they're 2023s. And, and I think I'm getting mine this year, but I think Daniel's not going to get his until 2024. So, 
we're, that's what so we're, we're seeing about. all the Broncos driving down the that's street. Right. Going, that's right. You know, I'm, I'm looking out down the road to see all these Broncos going by and I saying, yeah. So anyway, you're exactly right. Anyway, you're listening to financial strategies with Andrew and Daniel Elijah because people don't know what people don't know. I hope you stay around for the full hour because we're going to have some fun. If you're watching on YouTube or you're listening to any place you listen to podcasts, that's wonderful. And if you miss some of this show, you can pick it up anywhere you listen to podcasts or on YouTube. All right. Today, we have a paper we'd love to put in your hands. Today's topic is wishing, hoping, and praying. And uh, to go along with that, we have um, a paper called Building Blocks of Retirement. And um, this is uh, written by uh, my, my good friend and partner, David Scranton. And uh, it's talking about when you're looking at retirement, uh, part of getting away from wishing, hoping, and praying, because that's not a good way to enter retirement or even get in retirement, is, is looking at what you're going to need to live on in retirement, what your expenses will be. And this kind of talks about that. And there's two kinds of expenses. There's what you need to retire, which is kind of sitting on the porch, sitting in a rocking chair. And there's what you want to retire on, which is getting the RV and driving across the United States, seeing your kids, your family, your grandkids and friends that you haven't seen before and whatever the case may be, or whatever it may be, or buying, or, or, or buying a second home or whatever the case may be. There, there's, what you, there's what you need, there's what you want. So this paper will help you put that together. It's called Building Blocks of Retirement. Call and get your free copy, 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616 for your free copy. Daniel, when we're talking about wishing, hoping, and praying, we're talking about the subconscious um, and that is so many times what people do. They wish, they hope, they pray that they're going to be able to retire. Um, um, and, and, they, and they build plans, right? Well, and yeah. They build plans. Well, well, the other thing that they wish and they hope and they pray for, Daniel, is once they get in retirement, because being in my fourth decade of helping people retire and stay retired, I know this, I see this all the time, is, is make their hoping, wishing, and praying that they don't outlive their money. They don't want to suffer the living death, which is they're still alive, but they have no money. They don't, they, and, and that brings stress upon people, even in retirement. They don't think about that too much before retirement, but once they get like in retirement, they start thinking about that. And that is what we want to talk to you and our listening audience today about is wishing, hoping, and praying how we can get away from that. And you can know that you know that you know that you're going to be okay. Right. Um, that's a that's a, a great um, uh, uh, concept there. And part of how you can know that, you know, that, you know, that you're going to be OK is the difference between planning and strategies. See, a lot of people looking at retirement as a retirement, you know, I'm going to get rid of, you know, they do retirement plans. The problem with plans is is Daniel, you tell us what's the problem with plans? Well, the problem with plans is. Um... They are static and we don't live in a static world. We don't, we don't have static lives. We have, it's dynamic, right? right? Things are changing. People are typically invested in markets or things like that when they're trying to um, build up their wealth to retire and markets are not static, right? They're dynamic. So things change. Um, I want to hop back to something you said, and you said yeah. it's about how much money it's about what you want in retirement. It's about mm -hmm. what you want. And so here is something that is huge when we're talking about the subconscious, because when you have a plan, you have to you have to see each step. It's a process. Mm -hmm. It's 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 um, it's building blocks, but it, it, it takes you its resources. Get here to here to here to here. And the difficulty is um, if you can't make that work. Your yeah. subconscious doesn't believe you can get there. Yeah. Whereas when you do a strategy, it's dynamic. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is it starts it starts happening for you in that 95%, in that yeah. subconscious. Yeah. And it allows you to get to what that number you're talking about, about what I want. See, people limit themselves yeah. with the plan because they say, well, I could only draw 4%. This is the way we're supposed to do it. This is, um, we're doing it based on what market returns were the last 20 years. Well, what if it doesn't happen? And they limit themselves to this. And then their subconscious limits them even more because the plan says we get this spot. When you have the strategy, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's dynamic. It's dynamic. It can change. And now your subconscious saying, I can get to this number. And you know what your subconscious does? It doesn't just say that. It gets you to that number, right? Yeah, Over time, exactly. it gets you to that number. Exactly. And um, I, 
that is one of the the coolest things when we're talking about the strategies we're talking about the the subconscious working together to get you to that and then we're talking about this this huge very very important thing that you've been talking about this number the number you want not that you need that you want in retirement not yeah. the not the number not the not the value of asset numbers, right. the number you want coming into your pocket to support yeah. the lifestyle you want. Because when you retire, it's not that you need a million dollars, two million, three million, five million, whatever. you need a check to replace the check that you've been getting, right? I love what you're saying, Daniel, about the limitations. And, and that reminds me, the limiting beliefs is such a significant thing. And I got to say, Daniel, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for me in my life. As I am sure I'm sure so this one man trap or another, and you have helped me in my business, take this business further than what I could take it, do better in my own portfolio than what I could take it because of how you have challenged me to get rid of my limiting beliefs in so many things. And then, you know, that's one of the reasons why I have a, a 2023 challenger on order, right? Because of uh, you're helping me to be able to do that. So anyway, the point being here is that you know, you talked, we, we talked about in a previous show about the elephant, the elephant mm. tied to the chair. And people say, hey, isn't that dangerous? The elephant's tied to the chair, can take that chair and go, go off places. Well, no, you know, it's not dangerous because at, we trained this elephant to have a limiting belief when he was very small. We tied him to a tent peg and he couldn't move that. And so when he grew up and he just has this rope around his leg, he thinks he's still tied to that tent peg and he can't do it. So he's been conditioned to think he can't go anywhere if that rope is around his leg. And that's what so many people in this country have is the limiting beliefs that have been put upon them by the educational systems that's training worker bees training mm -hmm. people just to mm -hmm. do what they're told is to think outside the box and to do other things. And when we're talking about wishing, hoping, and praying, that's what those worker bees do is they wish, they hope, and they pray, and they play the lottery. Because <laughs> they're wishing and they're hoping and they're praying that they get the lottery and that they can retire tomorrow. Well, if you just joined us, you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajmi because people don't know what people don't know. If you listen here, when it comes to retirement, you're going to be here finding out some things that you don't know that will help you and could change your life. So today we have, um, today's topic is wishing, hoping, and praying. And that's no way to have a retirement. And we have a book for you that be able to help you put together ideas and strategies, turning financial planning right side up right? Because planning is not the point. Strategy is the point. Jeff Small, our friend Jeff Small in this book goes through um, how to have strategies that work so you don't have to worry about financial planning because financial planning is really, when it comes to retirement, upside down. And so, you know, this is a great book. It's an easy read. It's about 150 pages. Um, it's out of print. We do have some copies for you. It's been so popular. It's out of print. And um, it, you'll enjoy reading this, especially if you're an analytical engineer type. But even if you're not, you'll enjoy it. So you can have that book for free by calling us at 800-725-7616 for the first five first-time callers at 800-725-7616. Call now. This is Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. Back a few years ago, it's crazy how fast time goes. Um, we're out Redwood Forest, California, and uh, there's these beautiful rolling hills. And, you know, we're being a little crazy on this bachelor party trip and um, we got our longboard. So believe it or not, we are doing rock, paper, scissors, shoot for who gets to uh, <laughs> ride the longboards, not who gets to drive the car. <laughs> and um, so we get on the hill and we don't really have a way to stop the longboard. So we decide, well, let's have this, let's have this vehicle drive ahead of us and um, it will drive the same speed. And then when we want to stop, we'll just grab onto the car and then this car can slow down nice and easy and we'll be good to go. So we get up about <laughs> 35 miles an hour going down this hill. And uh, my buddy starts losing his uh, his control and he starts getting the wobbles. And next thing you know, he's uh, 
falling off the board and sliding across the, the pavement, you know, out, right? 35 miles an hour to sliding across the pavement, doing one of those kind of runny things where you try not to fall, <laughs> but like you're going too fast for your legs to move. And um, the drivers in the vehicle are other friends. Um, they, they've got this plan. They've got a plan, right? When, when we're ready to stop, we're going to grab on the car. And they're going to slow down. Well, the plan didn't work because um, they saw him fall. It didn't go to plan. And they, they weren't dynamic. They freaked out. The plan's not working. What do we do? Stomp on the brakes. Well, I am still on my longboard behind the vehicle. And they stomp <laughs> on the brakes. And uh, I go right through the back windshield of the vehicle. And my head Ouch. goes right up between the driver and passenger seat. And I'm like, hi, guys. <laughs> the, the plan went out the window, in, uh, in the window, out the window, whatever. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Daniel Adjunant. And I'm Andrew Adjami. You're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Adjami. Glad that you could join us today. We're having a lot of fun. Today's topic is wishing, hoping, and praying. And uh, because people don't know what people don't know. And they think that retirement planning is wishing, hoping, and praying. You're going to get there. But that's planning. And that's the plan that Daniel had didn't work. The plan went out the window, as he says, and literally. And, um, and so that's what we're talking about today is ways people get to retirement. Um, and many times people will plan for retirement, plan what they're going to do in retirement, plan, you know, these things and plans, as Daniel said, are rigid, they're static, they're cookie cutter. When it comes to professional financial people, people, you know, professional financial people typically say, you know, they, they, they do all these analysis analysis is that there i don't know but the, these things monte carlo mm -hmm. right and those things are ridiculous they're they're ridiculous because it's like fact based upon fiction or fiction based upon fact depending what you're starting with right and and you can then, make these things you can make those things say whatever you want them to exactly say. it's like liars figure but figures <laughs> don't lie right but you know <laughs> So, and you know, so that's what those things are. And that's kind of what a plan is where it's, you know, is it a value? I suppose it's of some value. It's better than nothing, I suppose, but it's not the way to enter or live in retirement. It's, it, it might be when you're 20 or 30 years old, you can do some stuff and you can look toward things of what you might have someday, somehow, you know, hoping, wishing and praying you're going to get to retirement. Um, but, you know, their hope is not a retirement plan. Retirement plans are based upon guarantees and promises as far as we're concerned, as far as our clients are concerned. Um, as being in my fourth decade of helping people retire and stay retired, we, we work on guarantees and promises to people. So, um, you know, strategies, on the other hand, and that's why our company called Edge Me Financial Strategies, the show is called Financial Strategies. Strategies are dynamic. Um, you know, there's something that can be customized to you. There's things that change with you change, change with the times, change with what's going on, as opposed to plans are rigid and don't really change. And if something changes, like Daniel going through the back window of that car, it's problematic and, and it, it could be life-threatening. Yeah, and it's not that we do not believe in plans. Plan, plans help you get to where you need to go. Plans are good. But when we're talking about retirement, you need more than plan. It's, it's weird that it's called financial planners because, um, because when we talk about how how dynamic markets are how unique individuals are um mm -hmm. it's a cookie cutter plan like we'll all put you in the same plan like oh here's a 529 529s are made for this so you have to go into this because <laughs> that's the plan that's what happens like like everybody's not the same people need money at different times right. like what that's if right. what if the kid doesn't go to school this is just something that popped to mind that like it irks me sometimes where it's just like this is what you do why <laughs> because that's what people are We're taught the people yeah. talk to be worker bees and how to how to obey how to how to do what what others say as opposed to being dynamic and doing what they're sold what they want yeah. And then we, we go by these things like the 4% rule. You could draw 4% of your account. Well, what happens when markets are flat or down for 10 years in a row? Does the 4% right. rule work? That's the plan. And it it's restrictive. And then when, mm -hmm. this is why we're talking about the subconscious too, because then 
that 95 percent is working on you when you're sleeping it's doing these things and it's restrictive and we right. want people to have a stress-free happy joyful right. retirement and when your subconscious is worried in your yep. sleep or yep. when you're on the boat you're out yep. on vacation but you're checking your phone because what, what's markets doing is the plan still working whereas a strategy adapts and it doesn't matter if markets are going up or down it doesn't matter if interest rates go to zero or they're because it's dynamic and it can it can change and it can get you to where you work and then exactly yeah nice oh daniel you said it nicely listen you're listening to financial strategies with andrew daniel Adge because people don't know what people don't know today's topic is wishing hoping and praying we have a document we have a paper that we'd love to put in your hand that will help you look toward retirement and to get in retirement this is a a, a paper it's it's called building blocks of retirement to help you be able to start building your strategy and the thoughts and get your subconscious going in the direction that you want it to go for retirement planning one of the first things that you're going to need to know is you know in 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 retirement and and looking toward your retirement creating a strategy for retirement, you need to know what you need to live on in retirement and what you want to live on in retirement. Those are two different things. And um, uh, that's one of the things that this is going to help you to understand because um, that's going to get you to where you need to be. That's the starting point for the building blocks for building a strategy for yourself. And you can have this paper for free by calling us at 800-725-7616. There's operators standing by 800-725-7616. Just ask for it by name, building blocks, a paper on building blocks. Okay. Um, Daniel, when you're talking about this, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking about is how, you know, like you mentioned the 4% rule, which is now actually like the 2% rule, but you know, people don't like to talk about 2%. Um, but, um, uh, you know, when a plan, you say, okay, I, my, my money's going to grow and then I can take out $100,000 a year out of my money out of the stock market. Well, what happens when the stock market doesn't grow by that much? Your money doesn't grow that. It grows by 50000 instead of 100000 Now you're digging into principal. What happens if it doesn't grow at all? Now you take in 100000 out of principal. Um, that's a plan. And plans that that is that's stressful. Going through the back windshield of the car. Like, what do you do now? Exactly, because then when that starts happening, that's the, the your limiting beliefs kick in to make you think that oh, I'm now I'm going to run out of money, and you are going to potentially going to run out of money before you run out of life if you continue in that fashion. But it, you know, there's you know, you and our listening audience, maybe you were already doing things in this fashion, and you don't like it because your money has come down, and you have to take money out. Well, it's not too late to change. You know, all just keeping it very light and very simple here. You could change your 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 system to a strategy now that you wouldn't be any worse off today by changing that for retirement, as if you had done it in January of 2022. It's amazing right. how that works. We can even explain that a little further. Are down. Yeah, even though right. your your account your portfolios come down, you're looking at that statement and it's still down big time from the highs. You can still change strategies and um, have a more um a more robust portfolio with upside potential but still get the same type of income that you would have got even if you had the portfolio that you had when it was at its all-time high if you if you had it in a portfolio arrangement then but if you have it in a growth arrangement and just market oriented just a plan of growing your money accumulating well it's even better than that so you can lower your risk and potentially increase your return depending how that works on how what you want to do with that so and and that's the idea you know it's a strategy that does that so wishing hoping and praying is for the birds throw it out the window um um that's that's the that's the okay well i hope that there is growth in the market so i can take the hundred thousand dollars so i can buy an rv or go on the vacation that's that's the hope and wishing and praying model right right um and that's that's the plan. The plan is that we're going to earn in growth and appreciation a hundred thousand dollars a year, so we can take that and we can have the lifestyle that we want to have. That is that's where the plan becomes a difficulty because markets don't obey your plan. You need something more dynamic, and exactly. um, and that's where that's why we love and we talk about these strategies because the str strategies are unique 
to the individual. Mm -hmm. And that's why those numbers that you're talking about are so, so, so important because yeah. um, instead of saying, well, markets, I, I hope, wish and pray we're going to earn a hundred grand a year, but like, I don't know what I need. So we'll take it out when we have it. And we don't, have, it, it builds a lot of stress and tension in the body. And, and then that comes out. We see people talking about this. It comes out in the meetings um, where, I, I, I can't afford that. Why can't you afford that? Well, because markets are having a rough time the last few years. Right? Um, and that's, that's people don't say I'm worried about running out of money, but that's them worried about running money. They just don't express it that way. Right, right, exactly. Um, so if you just joined us, you listen to Financial Strategies with Daniel Andrew and Daniel Adjami. Today's topic is wishing, hoping, and praying. Uh, that's no way to have a retirement plan. Hope is not a retirement plan. And uh, we have a book that we'd like to give you before we go to break. This is called uh, Turning Financial Planning Right Side Up. Um, well, Andrew, why are you talking about financial planning when you say planning is not good? Well, because the, the book is called Turning Financial Planning Right Side Up to be a strategy. That's the idea, okay? And strategies work. Plannings are based upon fact. Is fiction based upon fact? Fact based upon fiction, depending on how you come at it. But a true strategy works. Jess Small will tell you a little bit, will tell you more about it. Call now for your free copy. First five callers, first time, first five callers at 800 725 7616. 800 725 7616. Call now. You're locked on to financial strategy with Andrew and Daniel Adjuby. Uh, so, Daniel, you know, I, I didn't tell you about this. You know, I, I was down in Florida recently and we uh, got on a plane to come back to New Haven, Connecticut, and the pilot came on uh, the air and said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, uh, glad to have you on board here. And, uh, you know, we hope that we have enough uh, fuel to get us to New Haven, but we're not exactly sure today. Um, I mean, the plan that we have set forth is that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have enough, just enough to get there, but we don't know if the headwinds are going to be um, um, what the headwinds are going to be like. So um, we don't we don't exactly know. So we want to make sure that uh, you're aware of the um, the parachutes that are under your seats and uh, want to, uh, you know, I got off that plane pretty quickly, Daniel. I'm Andrew Adjami. <laughs> and I'm Daniel Adjami. And you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today we're talking about hoping, wishing, and praying. And uh, that's the best way to have a retirement, right? Hoping you make it, wishing you make it, and praying that you'll make it. Yeah, but not for me, man. I'm getting off that plane. <laughs> I'm getting off that. I'm getting off that thing, you know? I, I don't want to, you know, uh, I, I want to be sure, you know? And that's what we're talking about today, right? How can you be sure that you're going to be okay in retirement? Well, it starts with a strategy. And that's, again, why our company is called Adjami Financial Strategy. It's not called Adjami Financial Investment. It's not called Adjami Financial Planning. It's not called Adjami Financial Group. It's called Adjami Financial Strategy because about the financial strategies that we employ to help people to get to retirement and stay in retirement without having to retire from retiring unless they want to go back to work for some reason, mm -hmm. right? So strategy strategy allows them to do that too <laughs> right exactly but yeah it's it's unique right the strategy is unique to you to the individual to the retiree for because everybody has a different a different retirement right people right. want to do different things people exactly enjoy different hobbies people enjoy learning different things doing different things spending time with different people and so the the strategy um allows them to do that in their own personalized way. Right, right. Exactly. You know, one of the things I have to say here is that, you know, when people are talking about retirement and what they, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people about retirement and what they need to live on in retirement, which is talking about like what they need to like sit on the couch and watch TV or sit in the rocking chairs on the porch or, you know, so the basics, right? But, you know, what I want people to think about is what they want to do in retirement. And, you know, recently I was talking to somebody and talking about retirement. I said, do you want to travel in retirement? Because some people say, I want to travel. And this person was like, no, I travel. I already travel. I kind of been there, done that. And, and you know, it's not so, so 
so much fun anymore from sure i'm going to travel but it's just because i have to kind of thing and and i said well think of it this way about it's not where you're going now and you're traveling but who do you want to go with in this case this person had two sons they were adults with with both of them had married with children and i said take your sons with your children traveling what is that? That's going to cost more than what you're currently, than what you need, but it's something that you want so that you can, so that you can have fun with your children and your grandchildren and experience the joy of that. And I say, you know, I went, I took my family to Alaska this year for our 40th, my wife's and I, 40th anniversary, all my kids, my grandkids, my brother and his wife. And it was great. I've been to Alaska three times. That was my third time in Alaska and each time with different people. And, the, and that was the best trip to Alaska because it was who I was with. The first time I went to Alaska to go to Alaska because it was the destination. But after that, it was about, you know, who I'm going with and what I'm going to be doing while in there. And that is about what retirement is about. You don't want to hope and wish and pray that you get to retirement and then just get to retirement and that's it. You want to enjoy retirement. You work in 30, 40, 50 years, whatever, to get to the top of the mountain of retirement. And then what? Well, you don't think a lot about retirement's going to be. Some people retire to get away from the job and away from the people that they work at. Some people go to it. Some people are looking for retirement because they want to do different things that they haven't been able to do. That's a great way of looking at it. That's not wishing, hoping, and praying. That's that's strategizing to get to where you want to go. Yeah, we we want we want retirement to be thriving, right? Not right. just making it. Not just getting by, not sitting on the couch. I mean, if you want to sit on the couch in retirement, that's fine too. But, yeah, it's nothing uh, matters that if you clients, want. They, they they want to do things that they have not done before, and and like you're talking, um, that that joy that that brings to have that freedom, to have that freedom to know that the strategy is providing the income that you need, the paycheck that you need to be able to pay for taking the family. Because like, what's the money for, right? Right. Right. You don't want to so, spend it because you don't want to run out. Well, if you're just spending the interest, you're not going to run out. Yeah. And yeah. then that gives you the freedom to do those things, which bring the joy. And that's what retirement's all about, right? You're exactly right, Daniel. You know, I'm writing a book. It's called God, Family, and Wall Street. One of the premises of the book, right in the first chapter, talks about, you know, money is not important. What's important, the most important thing in life is relationships. And money is just a tool to enhance our relationships. That's what the money's for. So, you know, it, what do you want to do? Do you really want to enhance those relationships? So you better strategize for how that's going to be happen because wishing, hoping, and praying is not going to cut it. Hope is not a retirement plan. If you're just joining us, you listen to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Adjami. The topic today is wishing, hoping, and praying. And um, we are, have put together a paper for you guys that will be able to help you be able to understand this. And this paper is called um, uh, Why Investing in Mutual Funds Could Jeopardize Your Plans for Retirement. If you plan and you use mutual funds, uh, there's, that could be very problematic for you. So we'd love to put this in your hand to educate you because most people don't understand the dangers of mutual funds. They think mutual funds are great because they're easy, they're simple, they're diversified, but that can also, what's, what, that, you know, that thing that is good can also be bad in another direction. And so we'd love to put this in your hand. Just call, ask you for it by name, the paper called Mutual Funds. And why investing in mutual funds could jeopardize your plans for retirement. Call 800-725. 7616 800-725-7616 for your free copy. Daniel, uh, strategies, strategizing, strategies reduces stress. We are, our, our subconscious works and our subconscious, um, um, you know, that reticulator activator system we talked about at the top of the show is working and helping us recognize that we can be at peace because we have a strategy that's going to work and if it doesn't work, it, it's able to flex because it's, it's dynamic. The way life is dynamic. It's not static. And then that reduces stress so we can sleep at night. So we're, our, our worries are, are, you know, go by the wayside. Um, you know, and that's what we're all about is helping people to be stress-free. That's why we always say, you know, if you want your retirement to be stress-free, invest for the I, not the G. And we talk about how an educated retiree is a stress-free and happy retiree because they are going in the right direction 
and they're strategizing. They don't have to worry about if they pull out their hundred thousand dollars from you know from their two million, it's going to turn their two million into one point nine million, because they're not doing that, right, Daniel? They're yeah. they're 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 doing something totally different. Where are they getting that? You know, the, what we're talking about is getting that same hundred thousand dollars, but getting it in a different way, right? The right. alternative method. Right. Right. And, and tell us free, about it. and the freedom and the freedom and the and the stress relief that that provides yeah it, it's the old fashioned way it, it it it's what you know um the greatest generation did right right it's what the greatest generation did and um it's living off of your dividends and interest so when you when you have your 2 million dollar portfolio and you take 100,000 out and you're 65 years old and you're saying oof you know that, that's a big percentage of my portfolio. I'm uh, I'm going to keep doing this for another 30 years. Um, okay, maybe I won't pay for the kids to go on the vacation with me, or maybe I just won't go on a vacation at all this year. You know, we'll make sure it lasts. And um, and when you switch the strategy and you start thinking the other way around, where you say, well, I'm not going to take a hundred thousand dollars of my principal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to collect what my assets are paying me. And that's why we always use this, this definition of what is an investment. An investment is something that pays you. It has to pay you. It's speculation if it's something else. And speculation is fine in the right situations. I'm not saying anything about that. But you have to know when you're speculating and when you're investing. So don't call a speculation an investment because it's not. It has to pay you. So when you get right. set up in real investments, then they pay you. And now that $100,000 comes out of your investment. It doesn't come out of your principal. It's your interest that you're collecting. Now, yeah. you can compound it and grow it if you don't need it or you don't want it all, right? Maybe yeah. you earn 100, you reinvest 75 or you reinvest 25 and you take 75. That's the ideal way because now your portfolio continues to grow and give you this hedge um for inflation and everything like that and it will increase your income as well and you spend the 70 right. or the 75 and um and and you have the 75 do whatever you want with it and guess what next year there's another 75 actually there's more than 75 because the other 25 compounded right right and that's a beautiful way of doing it right um you know it's it's um just amazing what can be done too many times people think of the account value, right? All their lives with the 401k brain, they're thinking of what their account value is. And that's fine when you're 20, 30, 40, maybe 50. But when you start getting 50s, 60s, and 70s and beyond, you know, the account value, the account balance is not as significant as what we teach our clients is the other value, the income value, the money that that gets generated by that in that account value, right? The dividends, the interest that's generated by that. Or, you know, if, if the account value is the equivalent of the chickens, the eggs are what matter. Because if you're, if you're in retirement, if you have chickens and they're producing eggs, you're always going to eat because you'll have those eggs. And as long as you don't kill one of those chickens, you'll always get eggs. But if you're hoping you're investing in roosters, and guess what, Daniel? You know, did you know that roosters don't lay eggs, Daniel? <laughs> so if you want to eat in retirement, you have to kill a rooster. So then you have to hope that you don't have to kill a rooster and pray that you don't have to kill a rooster and wish that you don't have to kill a rooster. But ultimately, you're going to have to kill a rooster. Listen, yeah. if you just joined us, you're listening to Financial Strategies, then you're Daniel Ajme. Time for us to take another break. We have this book we'd love to put in your hand called Turning Financial Planning Right Side Up that will help you to be able to understand how to strategize because financial planning is really upside down. And we to turn right side up, you, you strategize and use strategies. And Just Small talks about that in this book. Easy read. Love to put it in your hand. First five callers, first time, first time callers at 800-725-7616. 800-725-7616. Call now. This is Financial Strategy with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. Uh, Dad, you uh, you brought you brought back some some old memories. You're talking about ready, ready for anything. The uh, the Royal Rangers model, ready for anything. Right. 
And uh, I remember going to powwow, going in, uh, me and my cousin Christian, we, uh, we did this compass navigation thing. And um, I don't know what was wrong with the course, if the course was wrong or our map <laughs> wrong, something was wrong. And the plan we, was wrong, huh? Something about the plan was wrong. <laughs> so we're in this course and, it, and it's not working out. And we used our intuitiveness to understand all the dynamics, all, all of our surroundings. And we said, okay, here's where it put us, but this cannot be right. Let's go here. And we moved from where the, the directions and the things that said to where our subconscious, where our all of our knowledge, all of our being prepared, our readiness had told us to go. We were open minded enough to do that. And we moved over there. And we said, this is the spot. And then we left and we did the do. We did everything. And the ward ceremony comes along and they say, Daniel and Christian, first place. <laughs> and we won. <laughs> I'm Daniel Adjami. And I'm Andrew Adjami. And you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami, this father son team here to tell you and help you educate you on what you don't know that you don't know, especially when it comes to retirement. Uh, today's topic is wishing, hoping, and praying. If you're wishing, hoping, and praying, you'll get to retirement. Uh, that's not that's not the way to do it, guys. Uh, we're helping you figure that out. And Daniel, that's a great illustration of how you had a plan. The plan was set up by the um, uh, the people who set up the course and the whole thing. And you realized that the plan was not going to work. And you had to go outside the plan and create your own strategy that would that was more dynamic instead of static because the static nature was changing and you needed to flex with the change to achieve the goal. And as a result, you won the prize. Fantastic. Yeah. Proud of you, son. You don't have to know all the steps of where you want to go, of how to get there. What you need to know is what you want. Right. And then you need a strategy. And so the strategy for us was that, um, we were ready. We were ready for anything. That's the Royal Ranger model. That's where we were, right? And we were pulling on all of our life experience, all of the knowledge that we had accumulated, using that in a strategy to get to the point, not necessarily a plan. And sometimes that's what you need to do. You need to let loose. You need to know where you want to be. You need to have a strategy to get there, but enough freedom to allow you to get there instead of being in this uh, static restrictive um, path that will not let you do better than the plan because because you're um, constrained, right? And to still, it's important to have the guidelines. It's important to have the strategy, but not to be too restrictive because sometimes you say, well, how am I going to get to um, $150,000 of income? Like, how are right. my investments going to pay me $150,000 a year? Well, Depending where you are in retirement, um, you need to let the strategy take you there. You need to be free and let the strategy take you there because compounding is not a linear thing. We think linear. People think mm -hmm. linear. Mm -hmm. um, there's the thing. If you, if you could fold a piece of paper in half 50 times, how high would it be? To the table? To the ceiling? to the roof of the house. People think about stacking 50 sheets of paper. It's not very big. It would go to the moon if you Crazy. could do that. That's the difference between linear. If you just stack 50 sheets of paper compared to if you fold it because it's compounding, it's multiplying. And that's what we're talking about, allowing it to compound, not just have a linear plan. Right, yeah. The, the linear doesn't work, and uh, that's because it, linear is dynamic, and compounding is just an amazing thing. Like, you, like you know, it's eighth wonder of the world, compounding, and it's a beautiful thing when you use it for retirement. It's a strategy that works. It's not a plan. Compounding is not a plan. Compounding is a strategy. How does that compounding work? How do you get compounding? Through income and dividends. 
not through growth. Growth is going from $10 a share to $11 a share, $12 a share. The problem with growth is it can go to 11 to 10 to 9 to 8 to 7 and become a loss, whereas compounding is always coming in and is paying you. And that's what we're talking about. You don't have to hope, wish, and pray. You can de- have a dependable income that you know is coming in that can compound for you to put you it where you need to be in retirement. And if you're not aware of how that can happen, make sure you get a retirement income specialist, a true retirement income specialist that can help you with that. All right. If you want to ask us about that, you're more than welcome to call us at 800-725-7616 to inquire. But at the same time, um, uh, inquire about getting the paper that we have to go along with today's show. Why investing in mutual funds could jeopardize your plans for retirement. Um, ask for it by name, paper on mutual funds, and this will help you to be able to understand how mutual funds may not be what you think they are. A lot of people don't understand truly what mutual funds are and how they work. So we love to put this in your hand, 800-725-7616. You're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Edge, because people don't know what people don't know. Today's topic, wishing, hoping, and praying. People think retirement planning is like the lottery. I wish I can oh, I'll hit it. I hope I'll hit it. I, I'm praying that I hit lottery. But what happens if you don't hit lottery? You don't get to retire? That's no retirement plan. So let's talk about something real quick here as, we, uh, as we're winding up and running out of time. Um, let's talk about we know, we know that that number is a very important thing. What you want in retirement, what you want. And then you're able to come up with the dollar amount of, of how to pay for that. And this is a strategy that you use to get there. And we talk about not having it be a linear plan, but having an exponential strategy where you can you can see what you need and then allow the subconscious in the background to help you build that and create that and get there. So how about you talk about some of these things that you see people doing that bring joy to them in retirement. The things that really put the smiles on clients' faces that we've worked with and you see every day you talk to and ideas so maybe people can have ideas so they can see what their retirements can look like or they they could see what other people are doing and they they can visualize this and help them um, start changing the way they think about getting to retirement. Great, great. Good point, Dan. Thank you. So, you know, a lot of things like the things that 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 brought smiles to my face, even though I'm not in retirement, right? I'm of retirement age, taking my my family on a trip with me, my kids, my grandkids, my brother, his his wife, you know, all these things that the relationships are the key. The relationships to retirement are the key. You know, there's a lot of times we have people that want to bribe their kids, so to speak, to bring their grandkids to visit them. So they they buy a cottage on the beach or uh, they rent a house at Christmas time to bring the kids, you know, the one that will hold the whole family kind of thing. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things, right? There's There's taking an RV trip. You know, driving an RV across the country, taking your grandkids in that RV to be able to see places they never would have seen before because their parents are busy raising kids and they have, you know, they don't have the money to be able to do that. So the cool grandparents can take the grandkids on a trip across the United States, right? Uh, or it's flying first class instead of coach. I mean, if you have the money, why wouldn't you do that? Now that you hit retirement, right? You're, you're, you know, it's like that example that I've said before on the show of how. I'm talking to these guys at these retired guys at at a, at an RV park, and I say to them that um, I say to them that um, the uh, uh, you know he says, "Hey, I just bought another boat," and um, uh, and I say another boat. He says, "Yeah, I have an RV down here in Florida. I have an RV in um, in." in New York. I have my home in, in Rhode Island. I have a boat. I bought another boat. And I said, you bought another boat? Yeah. My wife says, why do we need another boat? And, 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 you know, the answer is, it's not that we need another boat. It's that I want another boat, right? Um, you know, it needs were when we were raising kids and we needed to do this and we needed to do that. And we were saving for retirement. We needed to put away in retirement. And, um, uh, but now it's about wants what we want to do, what's going to put, put smile on, 
on faces, right? You know, I have clients that, that want to buy muscle cars, 50-year-old muscle cars, and their wives won't let them take the money from their principal. I don't blame them. So I, I you know, talk to them about, hey, if you had, you know, if you're a million dollars, you get five fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year that you take some of that money and you buy the muscle car with that money and you still got your million dollars at the end of the year. The next year, take that money and, 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 and remodel the house, right, for your wife, whatever, these kinds of things, right? So, you know, what, what is the important thing about relationships? That's the key. It takes money to build relationship or to enhance relationships. Money is only to enhance relationships. And that's what we're looking at. And you can do that when you're set up the proper way. When you're set up, um, why not? That's what I like when you talk about that vote. Why not? Like when you have the income, when you have that the assets that are paying you, it gives you that freedom to say, why not? Why, why wouldn't I take the kids? Why wouldn't I pay for the grandkids to do this? Why wouldn't I fly first cast? Instead of saying, well, that seems expensive. You don't have to think that way. And that's the stress-free retirement we're always talking about. When you don't have to say, you say, why wouldn't I do that? Because you have more income than what you need. You have more right. income than what you want to spend. Right. Right, exactly. And that's, and when you have more, more than enough income to do all the things you want to do in retirement for the rest of your life, that's the perfect retirement. You don't have, and you don't have to wish, hope, and pray for the perfect retirement. It's available to you today. And we'd like to give you this book that helps you understand how to be able to do that more. It's called Financial, Turning Financial Planning Right Side Up. Because if you do things the right way, you'll be able to get to where you're trying to go without wishing, hoping, and praying. First five callers, first five, first time callers at 800-725-7616 gets this book. It's out of print, but we've got some copies for you. 800-725-7616. Um, and we'll look forward to talking with you because an educated retiree is a happy and stress-free retiree.